Well, one of the sources, of course, for the study of inequality, inequality of income and wealth, is the census again. And now, today, we've got much richer census resources in Canada than we did in the 1990s. Uh, on my little computer there, for instance, I have the entire population of Canada in 1881 as it was enumerated, 4.3 million, as it was enumerated in the census of 1881. It's not a sample, it's the entire population. Um, that's thanks to work uh, done in the United States, uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, popularly known as Mormons. Uh, they're busy collecting the, the names of everybody from censuses, so they put in their computers the entire population of the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom for 1881, and they're going on and they're going to do, uh, you know, the entire populations of uh, these countries from other censuses. We also have, for Canada, uh, samples from the census of 1871, they're working on earlier censuses, 1871, 1891, 1901, 1911, and then the really big census project that occurred uh, in the first decade of this century, uh, the Canadian Century Research Infrastructure Project, which prepared national samples of the censuses of Canada from 1911 through 1951. Now, you have to understand that uh, we have a 92 rule of access to census information in Canada. Personal information cannot be released until after 90, 92 years. So what we did was we prepared these databases which in effect anonymize uh, the, inform the personal information for the more recent censuses. Today now, since the rule, the 92 years has elapsed, um, we can see the 1911 census in its original form. We can also see 1921. The 1931, 1941, 1951, we prepared uh, national samples that are usable by historians, uh, but the individual identifying information uh, is protected for reasons of privacy and confidentiality. But these are enormously powerful resources which mean that you can study change in the Canadian population over time and you can study such things as income and wealth inequality. So that's an essential source. It's not the only source of course, because if we wish to understand what people said about inequality, how they tried to solve the problem, we have to look at a lot of other sources. We have to look at a range of government documents, government royal commissions, we have to look at what politicians said, what political economists said, what journalists said, uh, hopefully trying to get a picture of the entire national conversation around these issues. Uh, because it was, at some level, a, a national conversation, at least among the, uh, the, the elites, the literate elites of our society, uh, politicians, academics, journalists, uh, educators. It was a very substantial conversation and we really need to know about it.